Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to review the brand new TCL 10L and 10 Pro. Both of these devices are made by a company that's more known for their TVs. As we probably already heard, the Roku TVs, they're generally a budget-friendly 4K TVs that you're able to pick up from your local store, or even one of the best sellers on Amazon. But today they're actually offering us, and they're available as of today, on Amazon unlocked model of these devices for 450 and 250. Which one's the right one for you? And are they good? This is TK, let's check them out. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So the really cool thing about this is that both of these devices are available today. I'll give you guys a link in the description below for the 10L as well as the 10 Pro. Again, running for about 450 and 250 here on Amazon Unlocked. So they'll work with any GSM carrier in the US. Um, they both support micro SD card expansion slots, although they both offer us a slightly different experience. Uh, being the fact that obviously they're offering us here a more budget friendly device here, like the 10L, and of course a more mid range, uh, I would say mid range device with the 10 Pro. Uh, we have four cameras set up on the back on both of them, uh, fingerprint sensor only on the 10L, as the fingerprint sensor on the 10 Pro is present under the display. Um, on the left side, we have a volume, uh, sorry, uh, basically an action button, which essentially is a programmable button that you're able to press once, twice, or press and hold to be able to do different actions. So they're calling it a smart button. Um, and of course, here we have the SIM tray that uh, gives us the ability of adding the additional memory on this, where it's actually present on the bottom on the 10 Pro. Now, looking at the top, we'll notice that both of them support the three and a half millimeter headphone jack, which is definitely very appreciated. The 10 Pro, although, supports an IR blaster that the 10L does not. So you are getting a little bit of extra features here on the 10 Pro uh, with the, basically a $200 price difference between the two. Now, looking on the left side, we have pretty much the same aesthetics, a volume rocker and a power button. And of course, if we switch it down to the bottom, basically single fire speaker on both of them, USB-C, as well as basically a second grill here for the microphone, where the microphone here is present next to the speaker. So that's more overall. And then of course, the SIM tray is present right there. So when we're looking at both of these devices, you'll notice that the display on the front is a little bit different. Uh, the one on the right here is a 6.47 inch 1080p panel, and it is an AMOLED panel with HDR10 support. And of course, one of the things you'll notice is that it actually has a nice curvature on both, symmetrical cur uh, curvature on the front and on the back, and of course, which makes the device look a little bit thinner as well as basically fits much nicer in the hand. Uh, now, as opposed to that, when we see here is a 6.53 inch display IPS panel uh, that is here on the flat, uh, with a flat display on the 10L. So if you're, if you're more comfortable with a flat display, I think this one will work much better. And this one does not support HDR10, it just supports HDR, uh, basically standard HDR. Uh, both of them are again 1080p panels, none of them are going to be running at a QHD resolution, but again the different technology provides you a slightly different experience. The cameras that we have here are also uh, ever so nicely, slightly different. There's a present uh, teardrop uh, camera at the top and of course here sitting on the top left. Um, I think overall no pop-up mechanism or anything like that provides you a very similar experience. Both of them are going to be running the Snapdragon 6 series of chipset. The 675 here on the 10 Pro and of course the 665 here on the 10L. There is a difference in performance and it is something that you will definitely notice especially when you're gaming. Uh, but overall more consider this basically more of the mid-tier mid-range uh, processor style and more of a budget friendly style. Again uh, both of them are obviously going to be giving you a really good experience with the displays even though they both run an AMOLED and an IPS resolution here. The 10 Pro will be supporting 128 gigabytes of internal storage with 66 gram and of course uh, the 10L will be supporting a 64 gig and an 8 gig RAM and as well as 128 with 6 gigs of RAM. So there's two variants on the 10L. Uh, but the cameras that we're looking at here of course is one of the main things we want to talk about and again both of these devices are supporting quad camera setups so on the 10 pro we have a 64 megapixel camera which is the main shooter a 5 megapixel camera as well which is a macro lens a 2 megapixel depth sensor and a 16 megapixel ultra wide on the 10l we were looking at the main sensor being a 48 megapixel sensor so slightly lower and of course we have an 8 megapixel which is going to be our ultra wide a 2 megapixel macro and a 2 megapixel depth sensor so even though we have four cameras on the back for the most part it's three cameras that you're able to use and of course both of them are able to record 4k at 30 frames per second with 1080p at 30 frames per second on the front facing cameras um, there are there is a slight difference as well on the cameras in the front this is a 24 megapixel camera as opposed to the 16 megapixel camera on the front facing side Due to the fact that TCL is a TV manufacturer, obviously their displays on both of these devices need to be some of the best technologies that you're able to find for a good price. So again, 250, 450. Both of them do feature the NTX Vision technology, which enables us to basically get some darker, uh, richer colors and tones. Let me go ahead and turn them off. So you can definitely see the color shift between the two. 
just going to turn them on and it essentially just boosts the color and it just gives you a much better experience although if i had to compare between the two i do personally prefer uh the way that uh, the amoled panel looks like over ips but again that's a partially why the 10 pro has that over the actual 10l uh, we will obviously have sdr to hdr content uh, upscaling there is a different set of let's go ahead and turn this on uh, basically screen color options although if you do turn on the ntx vision it does disable them so you're not able to change them other than basically just the color temperature so you can able to actually change it here let's go ahead and try to shift it over either warmer or default or cool and of course you could do the exact same thing here with the 10 pro uh, just overall it does need to be vivid whenever you have ntx turned on and i personally like to keep the ntx turned on because it actually attributes to better basically image experience when you're watching video specifically like i'm showing you right now i'm actually showing you a quick video using netflix on both of them again hdr 10 on the 10 pro and hdr support on the 10. Uh, and of course the netflix app was preloaded on this out of the box now that nice little smart button that i talked to you guys on the left side here that's present on both of these devices is really cool because again you can program it to be whatever you want uh, for me i have a program right now the single prints to launch the assistant so if i press it once it's going to just go ahead and launch the assistant for me uh, and if i basically double press it it's going to basically turn on the flashlight the 10 Pro does include this nice little launcher that we have here that you're able to swipe between the panels and of course add different application shortcuts, making it much easier to use in one hand. Um, dark mode is present on both of these guys and of course Android 10.0 out of the box and TCL has confirmed that they're going to support and that one update which essentially gets you up to Android 11 when that becomes available. So um, normal stock experience uh, here, both of them are offering us basically uh, the experience here. So that was the Google uh, Now feed on the left. Uh, swipe up from the bottom gets you access directly into the applications. They are categorized which makes them really, really nice. And I think at the end of the day, when we're looking at both of these devices, we have to understand that A, the content consumption on both of these is going to be really nice. So that's one thing I really appreciate. But not only that, it's the ability of actually enjoying your music. This, Both of them feature the ability of connecting multiple Bluetooth connect, uh, connected devices at the same time and streaming content to them. So you can play music off your device and have up to four people listening to the same content at the same time with the Bluetooth uh, headphones. So that's something that's very unique. And again, we do have that extra the IR blaster that's only present here with the side launcher. So a few little tricks here that they gave to the 10 Pro, but I think aesthetically, both of them are very nice. Uh, if you're thinking about picking up a device, and you're looking at obviously having multiple cameras, you want a wide angle lens, a telephoto, um, a macro, as well as basically uh, the good optics. I think both of these guys are gonna give you guys a very good experience. With that being said, let's start looking at pictures, which I think a lot of us will wanna be able to basically compare. So the first one here is I went on a walk with the family over the weekend, and of course it was a nice sunny day, so I'm taking some pictures. And again, you can definitely see that the 10 Pro uh, with the additional megapixel, since it's a 64 megapixel camera, uh, definitely provides us a little bit more, uh, basically I would say dynamic range, when it comes to the colors and the colors pop up a little bit more as opposed to being a little bit washed out um, on the actual 10 health uh, which is not a problem but definitely really good as far as the experience and when we look over here to this nice little um, really beautiful uh, yellow flower there it just looks very strong but you can barely tell the little uh, preckles or the little tips of uh, uh, inside of that flower and of course with the 10 pro you can definitely see it a lot more switching over to some, some, some really nice daisies there uh, they look really good as far as the color but again i feel like the 10 pro just does a much better color separation you're able to see the details uh, but I, i'd still say both of these cameras are very very good they're good performers switching over to a quick picture of the bridge here that we're going over and i feel like again uh, the sun even though both of these pictures were taken literally seconds apart you could definitely see the contrast of the sun um, directly how it is on the bridge uh, last but not least, a quick wide angle lens using both of the cameras, different megapixels, but of course, both of them look really good. No problem at all sharing any of these images on social media. Uh, again, just I think the experience that you're getting here is just providing you high megapixel cameras for a really good price. And the last one, of course, is here as a quick selfie with the family as we're walking with our masks. And uh, definitely need a mask that supports beards because uh, every time I walk around, everybody looks at my chin. <laughs> Starting off with the 10 Pro, again, a quick shot. Uh, I was walking down the bridge and you can definitely see here, just as me walking, and that's kind of a little bit of a bouncing there. 4K 30 frames per second, no 4K 60, but again, you can see how the dynamic range is going in and out of shadows with a really nice sunny lit uh, background. Should be pretty nice. Switching it over to the 10L, again, 250 bucks we're talking about um, decent uh, imagery again 4k 30 frames per second on the back and of course the same experience just walking around and showing you guys in and out of shadows there it looks pretty nice 
When it comes down to gaming, there's a little bit of a difference in experience here. The 675 definitely has a little bit more horsepower showing up. So let's go ahead and turn on a quick benchmark I want to share with you guys. Uh, and it's mostly just to show that there is actually a benefit in performance that you can actually see, even though this is a synthetic benchmark, you can appreciate the fact that the score obviously reflects the better improvement. Now, by no means are we talking about flagship quality uh, performance, but overall for general gaming, like when I'm, whenever I'm playing PUBG, for me, the experience is very nice. I do have additional features here to have uh, basically better display performance where I'd be able to not get that here with the 10L, mostly because of the limitation on the CPU. As I'm loading PUBG here on the 10 Pro, I just wanna share with you guys that both of these devices have a game specific mode. So it's called game mode present here. You're able to turn it on. So we have game turbo, optimized network and clean background applications to give you the best experience. And of course, disable the smart key if you definitely hit it every once in a while. Uh, disable three finger screenshot capture as well as some of the other gestures that are present here, block notifications, everything that you normally wanna do whenever you're playing games. And when it comes down to actual performance, the 675 definitely has a little bit bigger performance boost whenever it comes down to gaming, specifically, let's say PUBG here. I'm able to go to smooth to ultra, which gives me the 60 frames per second gameplay in PUBG, again, on the uh, 10 Pro, where with the 10L, we basically limited to use smooth and high. Not that it changes the overall experience, but obviously you definitely do get a much better experience using the 10 Pro whenever you're gaming. And of course, everything looks great. We do have native screen recording that's built in as well as the gaming mode that we talked about before. So we have there, screenshot, screen recorder, So for a quick audio sample, we're gonna play Jumbo by Alex Crindo. This is an NCS release. Let's go ahead and start off with the 10 Pro. Both of them are running at 100%. Again, keep in mind, uh, they're both mono speakers, bottom firing away. So the sound experience is gonna be a little bit different. Let's go ahead and put this one on the side. Now, overall, sound is pretty good. It doesn't have a lot of bass and it doesn't get super loud, but it definitely sounds good enough for us to enjoy it if you're watching the movie using your phone. Uh, and because of the placement of the speaker being on the top right, it actually doesn't get covered at all unless you're basically holding it like this. And at that point, I recommend you using a three and a half millimeter headphone jack or a nice pair of headphones. Again, up to four at the same time. Let's go ahead and switch over to the TCL 10L. Let's go ahead and unlock the device and we'll play the same song at the same level. And of course, the same spot. Overall, between the two, I feel like level-wise, they're both about the same, but when it comes down to quality of audio, I feel like the 10 Pro definitely sounds a little bit better when it comes down to the speaker. But again, four different devices at the same time connected via Bluetooth to both of these guys to get you the best experience, especially if you're trying to listen to it with a friend. At the end of the day, when we're looking at both of these devices, we really need to look at the price point that they're trying to hit. So the compromises and the tailoring of the experience that's present on both the 10L and the 10 Pro needs to fit how much they're asking for. So for 250 bucks, does the 10L make sense? I think it actually makes a really good uh, case for anybody that's looking for a budget-friendly device that has a large display, great display at it, again, 1080p with an IPS technology and the NTX Vision, which is, again, partially what TCL is known for. It's their display. So if the display isn't done right, that's going to basically take away from the experience. But you have to tailor the experience to a 1080p panel, as well as the fact that it's 250 bucks. So at that price point, with the cameras that we have in there. I think they're not gonna be the best cameras on the market, but again, for 250 bucks, I had no problem giving this to either uh, basically somebody getting a first smartphone, uh, a parent, or basically a sibling that wants to get a phone, but doesn't necessarily wanna pay a lot of money. I feel like 250 bucks is really good. And again, unlocked, put in your SIM card and add additional memory if you wanna expand the memory. And of course, it's not gonna have any problem give you guys uh, basically a really good HDR experience when it comes down to the display and the experience that you're getting out of it. Now, jumping over to the 10 Pro, does that make sense as far as the device is again, the $450, uh, basically the $200 over price from the 10L. Um, I think the design that went into this device, the aesthetics, the looks, uh, obviously the upgraded optics, as well as the actual uh, AMOLED panel that we get there, provide you a little bit better of an experience. I feel like the vibration motor on the 10 Pro is definitely better than the 10L, although it's not that it's super bad. Uh, but I think overall, definitely the $200 extra that you're getting there, you, you see and you feel when you're using the device. 
Uh, if I had to choose between the two and the money was not an issue, I definitely would definitely go with the uh, 10 Pro. But if I had to go in with a budget more, mind, basically a budget friendly mindset, I would say the 10L is a really good option. Both of them, again, available today on Amazon, unlocked uh, for 250 for the 10L and 450 for the 10 Pro. I think at the end of the day, both of these devices are gonna give you a great experience for the price point that they're offering. Um, overall, if price was not an issue, as I said again, I would probably go with the 10 Pro at 450. The camera optics are definitely very nice and the overall experience is definitely tailored to be more of a, a premium mid-tier device. I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you hit that like and of course, subscribe to the channel and share it with all your friends. Be safe.